What's up everybody, Philip Blank here, and we are gonna go through the Y Smart Home Thermostat. Now, I have been a huge fan of Wise for many years, since they've come up with just their original Wise Cam and the Wise Cam Pan, and I'm really a big fan of Dave Crosby and Yoon Zhang. Uh, just the amount of effort and engineering and thought they put into their products while also trying to make them lower cost. It's just been a really cool side to see behind and the front products of a lot of, the, a lot of their smart home products. I have never had a need to get one of these, but I finally had the opportunity to come up and so I'm like, you know what, I'll make the swap and switch over to the Wise Smart Home Thermostat. Now right off the bat, we get into one of the things I love about Wise. It is their packaging and marketing. Even though they are a budget-friendly brand, they don't make you feel like you're buying a cheap thing off of Amazon. So you can definitely tell they put a lot of effort into their marketing. I mean, look at this print. The hand wraps around, it's so nice. Now inside, we got the manuals and the device itself, which feels pretty good. Now, obviously, a thermostat is going to have far more complicated steps to it compared to just, say, a light bulb. So the manual here walks you through all the things it comes with, and it's got a quick explanation of all the symbols on the device itself. Also in the top part, we have the back plate and the mount, which is split in two in case you don't need the back plate to cover holes. And also this little sticker guide for the installation. Now, since the Wise thermostat requires a C wire or a common wire, which is the power source, they included this block just in case you're running an older system that doesn't have that common wire. So if you need it, they will walk you through it in the app, but most new systems are fine. Also included is two anchors for mounting your backplate and some of the hardware if you don't have common tools. So now that we got that ready, we can go ahead and start with the install. Now the app is super clean, and honestly we'll probably do a better job walking through it than I will, but we'll go ahead and get started. Step one, which is a very important step, shut off the power. Never work on a live circuit, so make sure you're shutting the right thing off. So now that we got the breaker off, we are going to go ahead and pull off our old unit. Mine just snaps on, so pretty simple. Now the app will ask if you're running a high voltage system. If you are, this is not going to work. I am not, so I will hit no. And the next step is to take a picture. Now this is something I recommend you actually take two pictures in the app itself, and then go to your camera roll and save the picture there because it's far easier to access in the future. Next, it's gonna ask if we have jumper wires. I do not, next. Now this part is why the photo is important. You have to go and reference all of the wires that are currently in use in your device and then you will select that in the app and this will control if it will work in the future. And that's why I took the extra photo in the camera roll so you always have that reference just in case you need to come back. Once you unhook these wires you will not be able to get them back in. And this is where you use that sticker guide. You're supposed to peel these off and put them onto each wire, but I just went through and marked by hand because the most important part of this all is that you're getting the color matching the letter that it was in. Colors don't necessarily correspond with the letter, so G does not necessarily mean green, but you need to make sure that you know what color was on to which. And because I removed an old thermostat, there were holes in the wall, and that means I needed to use my base plate unless I want to paint and patch, which is not worth it. Now I use a laser level to get my line straight, and then I use a screw to mark the hole of where I needed to drill a pilot. Now make sure you're using the right size pilot bit because if you use too small of one, you're gonna have a hard time getting your anchors in and too large is not gonna give you any support in the first place. So we can put our panel back on over the wires, make sure they all threaded through nicely. 
Now I'm using the laser level because I'm used to that and I know I can keep things straight, but I think it's pretty clever that Wise thought that most people didn't have this and included a little bubble level on the top. So you don't even need a level for this, they got you one. But this is the only place to adjust the straightness of your thermostat, so make sure you do it right here. Now that we're mounted, we can begin to connect the wires back. This step is super important because if you do this wrong, your thermostat is not going to run properly. As you can see, the app just shows which spots need wires, but does not tell you which color goes into what. So that is why taking good notes and having that image earlier will be super helpful for getting this all right. The excess wire I just kind of squished down behind. And now the best part, you gotta put the device on. So be careful with the prongs on the back as they'll slide directly into those wires you had earlier. Just make sure you put it on square and push firmly. And now we can turn our power back on. So back in the app, since we went through the prep and the mounting stage, we can go to add the thermostat. Now, all you gotta do here is keep your phone near the thermostat and it'll connect over. Once it does pair, you'll put in your Wi-Fi credentials and yes, you must have Wi-Fi set up before this. And you'll pick a name and you can change this later. After that, we'll go into the test phase and this was where you'll learn if you did it right. Now this next setting is how quickly your fan clicks on during the preheat stage of your furnace. I went ahead and set it to by furnace decision, but it gives you lots of options if you want. So if you made it this far, the thermostat is set up properly. Now you're just gonna go into some preferences and do a final test. This page determines would you rather the thermostat focus more on your temperature range or focus more on saving money. What you pick is going to determine your ranges here, but again, everything is fully customizable on your own. And now we can create a schedule based off of how you want your house to be heated and cooled. Pretty simple. This is the final test mode to make sure that the system is actually hooked up properly. What it does is it's going to blow hot air out. You have to go and feel, and then you hit yes, and then it'll do the same thing with the cold air. If it does the opposite, say where you're feeling warm air when it says you should be feeling cold or vice versa, there is a setting in the app to just completely swap the poles and that will fix the issue. Now I know we flew through that install, but I'm telling you, the app really is super clear. As long as you have a newer house and a simple thermostat, this definitely should be something pretty feasible by most people. Now, getting into the controls. You can control everything from the thermostat itself. So without the app, you can set your tolerance ranges, so your high and your low. You can switch between your modes, so when you're home, you can select that here. When you are away, you can select that as well, and also the sleep mode. And what this will do is put it into the temperatures that you had selected for those modes. In our HVAC mode, we have auto, we have heat, and we have cool. You can also shut it off here, but I always leave it in auto, which gives you a high and a low tolerance, and it'll keep it in that range. In the fan control, you can have the fan run with your thermostat temperatures, or you can click it on and it'll be blowing all the time. And finally, we have the settings page. Now here, you can do the system test again. You can reset the device to factory settings. You can look at your device info, such as Wi-Fi, or you can go into the emergency heat mode, which will bypass your heat pump and click on your heat strips. Also, you can lock it in case you don't want anyone messing around. So that is everything in the device itself. All the schedules and the fun programs and all the extra things are going to have to be done in the app. Okay, so at this point, the smart thermostat has been on the walls for about three weeks, four weeks, maybe about a month. Um, at first though, there definitely were a few issues getting things going. And at this point though, I think it's kind of equalized, but I don't know if it has just some sort of learning system and it's calm down, but the first issue we ran into was I set this up before I had Wi-Fi turned on in the house. So this thing must have Wi-Fi to initialize, to even turn on. So you'd assume that, oh, it's plugged in, um, then it can start working and then try and connect to your internet, but it won't even activate unless you have Wi-Fi for it to connect to, um, to then connect to the server, and then it can go offline and work without that. 
So I had to use my wife's phone as a hotspot and use it to uh, be kind of the connection to the server. And that did work fine. But then the problem that I ran into after that is once I installed the Wi-Fi, you have to, you can't go in and simply change the Wi-Fi in the thermostat. You have to completely erase the thermostat and then reconnect it. But to reconnect the thermostat, you have to go through all of the steps on how to reinstall it. So on that one page where it makes you pick all the wires that you had connected and put them in properly, you have to go through that again. And if you screw it up, then, and you don't have, say, a picture of the original that you removed, um, you're not going to be able to easily just pick all the ones that you did, and then it'll let you know if, if they're in the right spot or not. So I had to actually do that several times because at first I had Wi-Fi, I had to use the phone, and then reset that. And then I had the Wi-Fi that I added, but I had to change the name and everything because it was set up based off of how my provider brought it. So once I changed the name of my Wi-Fi and set my uh, network and passwords, I had to go and reset the Wise thing again. And that was a pain just having to go and reference the picture. There were a couple times where I didn't click one of the wires and then it would, in the test phase, go and say, hey, your, your wires are not initialized properly. So that was a pain for setup. Uh, you make sure you keep track of those wires, take that picture, um, and have that ready to go in case you ever have to reset the device because you're never going to you're never going to go and put your old device back on and so uh, you just need to have that reference saved after that though it was really doing some weird uh, programming things so in the app you go through and you set your home away and sleep patterns um, you can also you set the highs and lows of those certain temperatures and when you want those to turn on and off uh, i had them set from the beginning but then about a week in, it would just not, like we'd, we'd be sleeping and it would get down to 60 degrees, even though it was set to 68. So in the app, it said it was set in the sleep mode, but that it was just not recording the proper temperature. So it was saying, oh, you're at 60 degrees now, and it wasn't kicking the heat on. So I'd have to go and manually up the heat to tell it to warm up. Um, again, though, it only did that for about a week. And at this point, it has fully seamlessly just it goes to our patterns every night it drops down to 68 67 and then in the morning it warms up a bit and then throughout the day it drops down and then in the evening it starts to warm back up so that part i have really enjoyed and i will say definitely a fan of the looks it's been over on our wall and it just seamlessly blends in it is a little different having it vertical versus your typical is horizontal and that's why they give you the white square to cover up the spot that your old one used to be, but I honestly don't mind it. Um, uh, in, their, in their video where they talk about the design of what they're doing, they said they put a patent on the clicker knob, uh, your little wheel, and I will fully agree that that is really smooth. It has a nice tactile feedback. Every click is, it's not really audible, but you can just feel it very well and right when it steps. Um, all your controls you can do in the manual device. You really don't need the app to heat or cool or any of that, but you need the app to set your schedules, to set some of your sleep patterns, um, and all of the actual smart parts that comes with it is fully based in the app. Again, if your Wi-Fi goes down, it's going to save whatever memory it last had, so it'll keep your routine cycles uh, if your Wi-Fi is down, um, but uh, to keep things updated, you'll, you usually want to keep it on the app. Um, now this compared to competition. I will say that I really like WISE. I really like their business profile, what they're after, what their goals are. And so to me, a highly engineered device that doesn't cost a lot. I mean, this is an Ecobee can be over 200, 300 bucks about spending on what range you get. And this is well below 100. So the fact that you can get just as smart and capable device that to me has had no problems it's really like, okay, why would you really want to pay for the extra, especially when the style's great? Um, I have no complaints. So I definitely would recommend this. I would use it again. Again, I have not ran, run into any issues. Other people may have kind of software issues. I've not had that. So from my experience, it definitely has been a good thermostat. Now, I used to have an Ecobee. And between the two, to me, a good thermostat just works. It keeps your home warm and cool when you need it and you don't have to give it the second thought. 
Um, the Ecobee did that, and uh, at this point, this does, does it as well. So to me, they're both, they both worked great, and I'd be happy to use either. I do really like having this all unified, though, in the Wise app. So you got your Wise bulbs and plugs and cameras and all of that. It can all be in a single app instead of having your Ecobee app and your Arlo cameras and your Wise plugs and it just all of those things and your Simply Safe security. Putting it all into a single spot just makes it easier to check on your house. So you can say, okay, my lights are on, my thermostat's on. It just goes through the list. And that's the part that I really enjoy of the whole WISE system. Now, as I said to me, a good thermostat is one that doesn't cause any problems and it just heats and cools your house without any thought. Um, by those standards, this definitely exceeds everything I've needed. Um, on top of that though, it gives you the ability to have the app, program it easily from your phone, uh, program it from a distance so you don't even have to be home to check your home temperature and set your temperature if you're on vacation, you forgot to shut the heat off or things like that. It gives you all the abilities of a standard AC unit, but it really exceeds all that by giving you the smart home capability, all at a very low cost compared to um, what Wise calls a dumb thermostat, which is just plug it in and tell it what to do live on that little screen. So definitely a bargain for your money. I have not had any issues. I'll continue to use this. I wouldn't foresee any need to even switch from this. Um, if I had two thermostats, definitely put one on each and things have been going very well. So let me know if you have any other questions or comments or things I didn't cover or any questions on install tips and I will try and do my best to get back with you. So thanks for your time. Have a good day.